Namaste and welcome viewers to another brand new episode of Mirror Prime. It's me, Aushish Parikh, and the focus on our show today is a tragic, upsetting story from Guru Gram. A tragedy that is not just about one young life that has been lost, but also about a systematic failure that allows reckless drivers in India to walk free while families are destroyed forever. Akshat Garg, just 23 years old, a promising young man with his whole life ahead of him, is now gone. Why? Because a man named Kuldeep Thakur decided that traffic rules don't apply to him. He drove his SUV on the wrong side of the fast lane on a road and in a split second he turned a motorcycle ride into a death sentence. What's more infuriating is that Thakur's reckless behaviour was not an isolated incident. He has a history, a long history of traffic violations that should have ideally kept him off the road. Yet, here he is free on bail while Akshat's mother is left to weep over her son's lifeless body. She is shocked, outraged and above all, she is now demanding justice. All she is asking for and all she is questioning is how did a man who killed her son sleep peacefully at night while her entire family has now lost its pillar of strength. और मुझे कुछ नहीं चाहिए एक गलत इंसान ने एक मेरे बच्चे को मार दिया बस मुझे इससे कुछ नहीं है क्यों उसको छोड़ा गया मेरे को यही है कि क्यों छोड़ा गया उसको क्यों छोड़ा गया कि भाई मेरा बच्चा मेरा बच्चा चला गया लेकिन वो आराम से सोया उस रात वो आराम से सोया क्यों पुलिस ने उसको छोड़ा बस मुझे यही बोलना है कि भाई मेरा बच्चा जो हमारा परिवार हमें खा हमारे बीमार माँ बाप की सेवा करता है छोटी बहन को पालता है हमारे पालने वाला हमारा बच्चा चला गया और पुलिस क्यों नहीं हेल्प कर रही है हमारी क्यों नहीं हेल्प कर रही My colleague Priyank, who's been tracking all the updates as far as this case is concerned, joins us live on the broadcast. Priyank, this seems to be a pattern that continues to repeat. A brat who kills an innocent and then in a matter of hours, he is out on bail. Give us more details about what's the latest that we are tracking as far as this case is concerned. And also, is now justice far away for this family as well, like we've seen in a lot of other cases? Uh, see, we have got assurance from the Gurgaon police that uh, if the accused fail to provide the driving license, then certainly they will be adding uh, more stringent sections of uh, BNS, which can imply that uh, it will be non-bailable offence and he can be sent behind the bars. But that will certainly depend on whether the accused is able to provide uh, the, the driving license uh, which he should have had. That's why the police gave a three uh, days time period for him to come up with the driving license. On the other side, the, the, these kind of instances do happen and uh, where the accused get bailed from the court, uh, from the police station, I beg your pardon, because in these kind of scenario, uh, these sections are bailable. So, so the law need to be amended. This is what we have been focusing on near now since the years. And this is what the Time Center Network has also been highlighting, that uh, there's a need to amend the Motor Vehicle Act so that uh, the sections of the previous IEC, IPC and the BNS can be applied on these uh, kind of cases. In this particular case, the Gurgaon police had added the sections of BNS, but uh, the section 105, which is of culpable homicide amounting to murder, was not added in the FI. That's why the accused got bailed, which was very uh, trouble experience and very traumatic experience for the family. Because at one time, point of time, while they were giving uh, fire to the pipe, the accused was walking freely. So now the police is saying that by late evening, they can amend the sections in the FI, which can uh, certainly imply that the accused will be sent behind the bars. Also, Priyank, a lot of questions are being raised about the investigation that has been done so far. The friends of the person who died here, they say that the CCTV, the GoPro footage which was there as well, that was not collected. And even without doing that, this accused was let out on bail. There's also a question about how a person like this, who did not even allegedly have a driving license and had a history of such cases, how was he even allowed to drive? All right, we'll try getting more details there from Priyank. But meanwhile, this is viewers' uh, shocking news that's coming in right now as far as this entire case is concerned. And of course, we'll be discussing this and a lot more on the broadcast. Right now, joining us 
is Anurag Kulsreshta, who is the founder president of Track Society. Anurag, this is again a pattern that we see in multiple cases. A clear violation of law, a person who absolutely has no idea how to drive on a road, he takes a vehicle on the wrong side and kills an innocent person. And guess what? He's out on bail in a matter of hours while the family out there is sitting and demanding justice. It's, it's sad, it's tragic, but what's upsetting is the fact that this seems to be a pattern that continues to repeat in India one state at a time. Actually, Ashish, uh, well said by you, but there's a difference in dealing a cr criminal case and a road accident case. Because we are not setting up any type of role model in this case, in case of accidents. Here we have to see everything because the crash investigation is not proper. It is done by the police only. They are not knowing about the road atmosphere, infrastructure, as well as they are not focusing on the history of everyone. Like I am pointing out two questions, two points over here. As per the safe system approach, investigation must be done. That is a system to minimize the impact of a crash by providing safe road infrastructure with stringent action by the police. Now remember one thing, thousands of cases are of this type of case, wrong side driving, hit and run and everything, but everywhere it is mentioned by the court also, why don't we set an SOP? In every such case, the section 278, 279, 338, and then 106 will be applicable. If all the DZPs of all the states, it will be, they will be informed in such cases, these basically acts will be applicable. But it is not happening. So police is doing whatever they, whatever they know and the type of investigation they are doing. Now I'm pointing out two things over here. One is the victim and another is the accused. So no doubt this accused has done a great mistake. He will be punished as per 279, 338 and 106 also. And on the another hand, why are not we thinking about the group of bikers who are over speeding on these roads? And if you can see, they are crossing, they are from the third lane, they are crossing second lane, then coming to the first lane with a speed of around 100 or 120. With a group of bikers. But right now, also joining us is Shilpa Mittal. Shilpa is the same person who is the sister of Siddharth Sharma, who was killed in a Delhi hit and run case involving a juvenile in 2016. Shilpa ji, I totally understand that you know what the family's emotions will be right now. I'll ask my team to play out the visuals of the mother there, who is now sitting there and demanding justice. She's unable to sit steady. She has lost her son forever. She hasn't been able to sleep since that day, but the man who killed her son has hardly spent any time in jail. He's already out on bail. When something like this happens to a family, like something that you have also experienced, how do you expect her to believe that there is justice in this country? No, I don't expect her to believe there is justice in this country. I'm sorry, the justice system has failed everybody, every citizen of this country. The reason why these accidents are happening in the first place is because the judiciary has failed everybody and that is what gives the promotion to all these perpetrators. You know, where do they get the confidence of riding on the wrong side of the road and on the first lane? So you can imagine, this is not the first time that that boy must be doing this. They, he must have done it earlier also. He has uh, previous challenge. And I want to actually ask the traffic police in Gurgaon that why does he have a challan? He doesn't even have a license. He shouldn't be challan. He should be jailed in the first place. Why is he driving also? They can't issue challans. I mean, we as a common people believe that, you know, somebody, some crime has done, basically middle class, I would say, believes that there's a crime done and there will be a punishment. But that is not how it functions in India. After eight years of struggle in the court, I've realized this. There's a justice that we have in our mind and there's a justice which actually happens in the court, which is not for the victims you know every time i am thankful that there is a media in this country because every time something goes wrong the media has to step up play the role tell the policemen what section to apply like it happened in this case today they have changed the section so that the boy can be arrested they just let him walk away in 16 minutes but isn't this now, tragic it the is fact that 
there was a there was a gopro footage that captured the entire incident everything yes. is there on camera but this yes. footage was not taken by the police on the day of the accident this person exactly. was released on bail and only after that we are learning that the footage is being taken exactly i mean imagine no the investigation uh, the investigating officer the ios are the most important people in an uh, incident and they don't even know half of the section they don't care who you are somebody has died they take it so lightly the there is no sympathy involved there is no you know it makes you feel so helpless and every time i watch a case like this because i have been through this i am like when is the system going to wake up for a common man of this country that you as a police as a judiciary were actually made to serve the country and the citizen of the people you know of this country but what happens is we are serving them we are looking at the police sir aap ye kar do sir aap ko kar do why do we have to beg the justice why do we have to demand i hate the word you know uh, justice and fighting for justice why do i have to fight for something which is my right i pay taxes i pay uh, you know i play by the rule book that is given to the everybody on this planet but only we suffer and then everybody goes away freely all they have to do is have some sticker of some party or they have to have some money in their pocket and everything goes free you know it's so shameful and it's so disheartening absolutely absolutely isn't it every time you know okay. it's, it's, also joining us right now is shailesh sinha who's the ceo of the traffic people foundation shailesh ji absolutely tragic we just heard shilpa ji they talk about how her family also experienced something like this and we see such cases coming in again and again and most of the time these accidents are avoidable here we are looking at this person driving on the wrong side and even then he looks surprised that there's an accident and the case that is being booked it's not for murder how do how do how does one think that this is not murder because if you're driving on the fast lane that too on the wrong side you are bound to kill someone you know you're going there to kill someone how how can it not be murder See, first of all, I need to mention very clearly here that a ve- a vehicle is a weapon if not used right. Same thing happened in Gurgaon. A guy, twenty-two years old, with so many dreams, with mother's dreams, with family dreams. I mean, why can't we understand the problem that the system is not working right? I mean, this guy should shouldn't have been, you know, left on bail or whatever the case has been. Second part is that this person needs to be trialed as a murderer. The day Indian judiciary would practice this point that any rash driving because the vehicle is a weapon if not used right, why a 22 year old guy or a 25 even 45 why somebody dies just because somebody else's negligence? I mean. the judiciary the police system i i just heard shilpa ji uh, she said that it, i mean we have to fight for justice why do we need to fight for justice when justice is our right i mean very rightly said shilpa i mean second part is that why the police is not sympathetic why it's just a case for them i mean it is just a case for a police or a, or any department like this the day judiciary would address this as murder any of such accidents happening i mean if this show is running for 30 minutes i mean our show all, all almost 12 to uh, 13 people would die on the roads of the country i mean every time this is happening and we are just doing some shows like this we are doing i washes that road safety week is happening some trial is happening uh, what is this i mean we need to be really stringent in terms that we need to address these things as murder this should be addressed under 302 not 34a understand that i mean the day there'll be some kind of you know a uh, a uh, frightening happen in the minds of people things would be different altogether right shailesh ji there I seems mean, to be some issue there with your network we'll try patching back again anurag ji this is the main question that is being raised right now by both our guests here why should an innocent soul pay the price of someone else's negligence and even when that happens you look at the laws here now bns i was looking at the bns law here the law on one hand if the case is reported by the person who's caused it maximum is 5 years if the person goes missing it's a hit and run case maximum it's 10 years do you think it's fair so actually ashish we have to think as per our law or as per as per our possible laws 
by the pressure of the maybe the media or the agent, other agencies. Now there are two things. We have to look all these cases differently because you know one thing is very true in this country and very crucial. Ki our union minister, Mr. Gadkari, Shri Gadkari ji, has raised the hand. I am unable to stop the accident or I am unable to reduce the accidents and the threats in India. So that is the, our this culture of the country. We are unable, our head is saying, unable to stop it. Now, second thing, it's just because of the state policing. Because till now, no police, no state police is basically strengthened or the, there's a capacity building how to deal with these cases. Supreme Court Committee on Road Safety has said all the states to form this crash investigation team in every district, but it is not working because other factors are there, like infra we are providing the infrastructure which provokes to such accidents. Like you can see this road, it's a curved road. One person moving from here and he is coming from the third lane to the first lane. And if there's a greenery on the divider, if you will see the five feet greenery, and as per our Indian law, that is IERC, Indian Road Congress, it, it must be only two and a half feet, including divider height. So that to improve the visibility, one at least this biker can see that somebody is coming from the wrong, wrong direction in first lane. He's unable to see that. Absolutely. So That's clearly, this there, there have happened. been rules that have been violated on multiple sites. I'll come back to you. I'll just, I'll just go across to Shilpa Ji, Shilpa Mittal Ji. Shilpa Ji, now again, a lot of things that you also mentioned here, the fact that on one hand, as a family that goes through something like this, you have to deal with the trauma of coming to terms with the loss of a loved one. On the other hand, there's another trauma of fighting for justice. Yes. The fact that there's evidence, the person yes. who caused it, there's absolutely every evidence to nail it. And yet, you have to roam around in courts for many, many years just to get justice. And the justice that you get also is that the person is in the jail only for a few hours or a few months and then he's out. He's living a normal life while your family is destroyed forever. Yes, that's true. Very true. I mean, I, I always tell people that, you know, you are once a victim of a road case that just happens once and then you are the victim of the system because system keeps... Uh, making you feel that you are the victim because it is not for the victim. It, it it doesn't give you any relief. Can you believe if I say that to you that if in my case there is evidence exactly like this, there's footage, there's people like uh, the, uh, the accused has agreed that he was driving, everything is clear. It's eight years, not even a trial has started. We are still fighting on which section to put on the boy. Can you believe that? Eight years. And this is when everything is there. Imagine the other cases where there is no footage and then people are powerful, they bribe, they, you know, maybe buy people out. You know, the, the system is not for you and it is failing the common man of the country and the judiciary is not helping. And uh, the worst part is even if the judiciary is helping, uh, you make these laws and bylaws and everything, but then there are so many loopholes. We went till Supreme Court. Nobody can be tried as an adult in a hit and run case if somebody dies because there's a flaw in the law. I've been screaming my lungs out, but there is nothing done by the judiciary. You know, they don't want to change the loopholes. They want to have those loopholes and they want to make people suffer. Finally, who dies? You know, who dies? Who's on the road? Who that person dies? All these rich and famous people, they don't, uh, you know, they don't die. They don't have to go. I mean, they have so many cars with eight seats, uh, you know, airbags and everything. Who Who's going to die? So who's going to fight for justice? And why do I have to fight for justice? Now, there are so many questions. As a citizen of this country, the judiciary is not for you. And I think they have to really work on it. And between the common man and the judiciary, there is a link which is called the police. They have to do the reporting correct, which they are not doing. And they fail miserably. Either there's a lack of evidence or they have not done their job correctly. Or, you know, even in this case, they just let the guy walk away. I mean, this is a classic example and this happens in every case. I mean, ask that policeman that would you do that if it was your son who died? They would hang the whole family that day. So why are the laws different for your family and my family? Why? Because I'm nobody. 
so i don't matter the common man doesn't matter of this country we are only here to pay taxes or we are just only here to suffer i mean why do you have these laws if you don't want to implement it police doesn't want to file the fir if they want to file then there is so many loopholes nobody comes to tell you what has happened you have to keep going to the police station when they finally the fir files after you know 60 days or 90 days then you have to wait for all the post mortems which comes in 6 months or eight, you know in year it takes i mean every report everything is so delayed it just keeps delaying it is sad it is it is disheartening it breaks you down it is financially emotionally mentally exhausting and why first somebody dies in your family and then the whole family dies with the system do do they want to set examples right. like these and it keeps happening anurag ji i'll i'll ask you to come in here because again one of the complaints here is the laws in india even even if the person is convicted the laws are just not strong enough they just don't act as a deterrent so what's the other way how do we ensure that people before they flout rules they think twice ashish with me yes it's for you mr anurag Uh, Ashish, you are addressing me. Yes, Mr. Anurag, that question for you. How do we? What do we do more to ensure that the laws are so strict that people, the next time they break rules, they decide to do something like this, they think twice. Actually, we have to set an SOP and the accountability of two departments. One is the police department, that is traffic department, and civil department also. Both the departments. Then our accountability of all engineering departments maybe the horticulture department who is doing the vegetation on the roads like this up to 5 meters because we have to stop such thousands of accidents if you remember such type of cases are happening with, with every one every family almost is a victim of the road accidents maybe the minor or major it's happening everywhere we have to think little differently because every victim family is having or raising the same question ki we want justice who will give the justice what type of justice we are just appealing with our government one sop one standard formation must be there that's why i'm telling again and again that we have to set the accountability we have to set the system as per the supreme court road safety committee it just and all the investigation must be as per the law which they are suggesting here only police department is doing the investigation for which they are not having any capacity of doing all these things they are just doing big vehicle small vehicle pedestrian or motorcyclist motorcyclist to car and then all but they are not focusing on the real causes behind all these accidents if the vegetation on this road was proper at least both drivers can see each other at least they can when they he was coming to from the third lane to the first lane at least he can adjust himself and he can be on the second lane this life can be saved if this infrastructure will be better there so one thing there if proper investigation will be there then the police persons as well as these engineers must be accept accountable for that and till the moment if we will not do this Every victim Absolutely. family will be crying Mr. like Anurag this. Mr. Anurag ji, I remember the last time we spoke as well. You made this point very clear that the engineers, the people who maintain the roads as well, even they need to be held accountable when something like this happens because there is a there is always with every accident there's a scientific reason why that accident couldn't have been prevented. I appreciate you joining us on the broadcast. All right, viewers, on that it's a wrap. Again, this discussion wasn't really to talk about what's going on, what more should be done, but this was to ensure that no other mother has to stand where Akshat's mother stands today, crying for a son who was taken too soon, and she's still demanding justice. And we'll also be raising the voice. I appreciate you watching us. Mirror Prime will be joining you with much more on the other side. Stay tuned. Keeping up.